uh, you know, the Chautauqua movement was, was one of the largest cultural phenomenon of the late 19th and early 20th century. 45 million people probably attended a Chautauqua before 1930, 10,000 circuit Chautauqua towns, 400 independent assemblies like Palmer Lake. So a huge impact on our culture. And yet, Palmer Lake is so interesting to me because it's what I call a cultural site without a memory. Something really important happened there, and there was a vibrant institution, and yet you can drive by the site today and not know that it happened. The Pikes Peak region along the Front Range of Colorado has always captured people's imaginations. From time immemorial, Native Americans sought its healing mineral waters and its high dry climate. It's no wonder then that by the 1870s, General William Jackson Palmer began to develop this region as health resorts and cultural retreats. By the mid-1880s, the communities of Colorado Springs, Manitou Springs and Ute Pass were in full swing, catering to a sophisticated Eastern elite and wealthy Europeans who enjoy the health cures and respites of this new port in the Rockies. During this time, Reverend Forrest M. Priestley of Princeton, Illinois, was also attracted to this region not only to seek a cure for his ailing lungs, but also to establish a Chautauqua assembly, which would be a welcome addition to this already settled region. In 1874, John Hale Vincent and Lewis Miller, prominent ministers within the Methodist Church, had created a summer Sunday school teaching movement on the shores of Lake Chautauqua in southwestern New York State. It became a place where families would come, teachers would come, uh, all kinds of people would come in the summer and they would take classes, hear concerts, hear lectures. It was meant to be a sort of intellectual summer camp. Um, in a beautiful location away from the hustle and bustle of the cities. And there was a very determined um, attempt to uh, make education an everyday part of people's lives for the people who, who didn't have the opportunity to have a higher education. At the turn of the century, uh, only about 2% of American adults had graduated from high school. And so this was an important opportunity, not for what we think of as uneducated people, but for people who were the heart of the middle class. They were the real clientele for the Chautauqua movement. And, you know, it was an idea that was too good to go uncopied. And so within a very few years, there were other assemblies, is what they called them, uh, half a dozen spread throughout the Northeast, and then the Chautauqua movement spread across the country, really like wildfire. When Reverend Priestley arrived in Colorado Springs in 1885, he realized he should take his dream of a Chautauqua up to the burgeoning health resort on the Divide at Palmer Lake. There, he was told he'd find enough land to form his utopian community, and he should speak with Dr. William Finley Thompson, the town's founder. Reverend Priestley headed directly to Dr. Thompson's residence at Estemir Mansion, with hope for improving his health and eager to share his dream. The two gentlemen immediately connected, and Dr. Thompson assured the good reverend that he had come to the right person. 
He agreed a Chautauqua assembly was a magnificent idea which fit right in with General Palmer's goal of establishing more cultured resorts along his railway. Dr. Thompson was eager to sell off the land just outside of town down along the creek beds. So Reverend Priestley took an option on a wooded triangular tract of land below the village, bounded between North and South Monument Creeks, with the mountains to the west, naming it Glen Park. That summer, Reverend Priestley tramped over every nook and cranny of the Glen. He rapidly gained strength in the invigorating mountain air while he surveyed and platted his cultural center.